Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Build Part 6, The Builder's Wall. So, what do we mean by The Builder's Wall? Are we adding some kind of wall to the castle? Well, we might be, but that's a concern for later in the episode, because what I mean is something similar to an athlete's wall. When you run a marathon or undertake like a massive task, there's usually a point during it where you start to realise just how much you have ahead of yourself and a feeling of doom or dread can wash over you as you wonder if you really have what it takes to finish and see it through. Will you have enough fresh ideas to continue or will you lose motivation before the task is complete? Now usually I name an episode by what I'm building in it, but this time we do a few smaller jobs because I think I've reached my builder's wall. I took a look at the fortress and just realised just how much work there was left to do. But the only way to beat a wall is to smash right through it, so let's get straight to work. Now the first thing I wanted to do was to build an offshoot kind of side tower, similar to the one we have in the Mage Tower back at the Kingdom. So I built out two prongs from the two towers that I wanted it to connect to, and then set out to build a template for a circle that would become the tower itself. Once the circle was in place, you see there the wooden cross, I moved down and built diagonally out of stone brick what would become the support strut to hold up the tower. Once the strut was in place, I began to flesh out the circle, put down a dark wooden floor, and then used smaller circles to give the bottom of the tower a dome-type base that would connect to the dark stone brick support strut. And here you can see a view underneath of the kind of dome effect we have underneath the tower. Once the tower's position was calculated, I came to the inside of the support strut and put torches in to light it up in the night. And then I used wooden fence posts to create this kind of lattice effect and to make the support seem like it had a bit more structure to it, like it would hold together better and support the outer tower a little bit stronger. I'm not sure if I'll come back to the wooden fences and perhaps hollow out a part of the middle or add some kind of design or pattern because at the moment it looks a bit bland and kind of strobes a little bit as well when you see it from a distance which is an effect that I try to avoid with most of my buildings. Once the wooden fence post lattice was in place I came back with the stone brick and added some kind of crenellations to the bridges that connect the tower. And then once the support struts and the bridges were done, I replaced the wood with dark stone brick and began to climb upwards. Now I didn't want this tower to be too big because an arm this long wouldn't be able to hold a massive stone tower, so I only created a stubby kind of tower that pokes out. Once I had the tower's height complete, I came around the sides with iron bars and dark stone brick and began to decorate the sides of the walls to make it look a little bit more interesting. I then used red nether brick steps and nether brick blocks to create a peak similar to the ones we already have around the evil fortress. Throwing in some lights as well, so that you can see exactly how we've done it. And then once the tower detail was complete, I came up to the roof. And again, the bottom of the roof starts shallow, but then the peak kind of goes up very steeply to create this kind of curved effect on the tops of the roofs. And here you see the finished roof that we've ended up with. And there you go. 
the side tower complete, it was time to come back around and take a look at the towers that we haven't quite finished. Again, the outside towers aren't done and the main tower itself isn't quite done because the detail still needs to be added. But before we hit that, we have to get it all structurally completed. And that means building up again with darkstone brick on these smaller inner towers. And this episode I wanted to cap off two of these, the one you see me building now, and the one to the right there that I'm building now. Now I wanted to add roofs on these that were almost identical to each other. So I rebuilt a copy of the connecting bridge you see underneath, up again and you see it there emerging in a ghostly fashion, as we switch from before and after. And once that bridge was in place, I began to create a square at the top of one of the towers. Because I wanted this tower, although the tower is a cylinder, I wanted the top to be uh, a square kind of top. So I built a large square, connecting to the tower with a smaller square. And then once I had the size right, I copied that design on the tower opposite. Messed around with crenellations until I had something I was happy with. And then again copied that on the opposite tower, going back and forth between the two. Once the crenellations were in place, I built up again and added the second tier to the tower. But this wasn't going to reach very high, or at least not as high as the main Citadel Tower. This was just going to reach up ever so slightly, and then a slanted stair roof was going to connect. But then where the other roofs in the castle start shallow and then peak up steeply, I wanted the roof here to start shallow and then be separated by another tier of tower and then the red nether brick roof would come into play at the top of that tower. So I toyed with the idea of using either the red or the wood. Eventually I stuck with the wood, built the second tier to the roof of this tower And then once I was happy with the height, I built a layer inside it out of dark stone brick, which gave me more room for adding decoration at the front, you see. So it gave me more room for designs. I then began work on the roof. And again, it starts shallow, but then peaks quite steeply. And once the top of this square tower was done, I came back around with iron bars again and red fence posts, nether brick fences, to add a little decoration to the top of the tower, make it look a bit more interesting. And then again, with that tower complete, and the top secure, I came over to the other tower and replicated exactly what I'd done on that tower, again on its twin tower to the left. And there you go, the two towers complete there and the side tower that branches off with a support strut complete as well. Now all the detail hasn't gone in because, as I've said before, what we're focusing on is actually building the structures first. I add detail here and there, but the bulk of it hasn't been done yet. That's something we're going to come back to at the end when we give a final pass to the Citadel as a whole. But when looking at the Citadel, I realised that the castle looks too tall. I mean, there's, there's not enough around the base to kind of give it enough volume around the floor level. So when I mentioned the wall at the start of the video, what I thought was I might come around the edge and build a kind of wall. So what you see me doing here now is coming out of the towers and building the start of what will be walkways, similar to the ones that network the interior of the castle, will have walkways that dance around the outside as well bolstering the weaker areas of the citadel 
but with fortress-like structures that give the whole citadel a bit more of a military feel to it. Now these walkways aren't going to hang in the air forever, but before I designed the struts to hold them up, I needed to map out where exactly they were going to go. So all you see here is a thin layer of one block dark stone brick, just to give me a guide of where I was going to put the walkways and the defensive structures. But that's something for next episode when we come back to the exterior of the castle and we look at the outer defences. So there we are for this episode of Evil Fortress, part six. With the construction of the outer walkway and the wall around the outside, I feel like I've conquered my builder's wall. I have a clear idea in my head now of where we're gonna go with the fortress, and things are starting to look complete, especially with three of those roofs being in place. The two towers there being completed is a massive milestone. And when I look at the fortress now, I see a much more complete structure, and that spurs you on. When your building starts to look like it's finally taking shape, that's when uh, that's when you really feel like you're making progress. So, I've been Shin. Thanks for watching. Hit like and favorite to support the series, and hit subscribe if you want to see more. And I'll see you next time for more. Let's build. Take care.